Assalamualaikum and good greeting. So today I'll be watching a video titled Are there any Muslims living in Alaska? Question mark. I'm assuming there are because otherwise there will not be this video and this question. Uh, but without further ado, let's watch. In the past two decades, Islam has grown quite rapidly in the United States of America. Many of the country's states where Islam was not known until the beginning of this century are now home to thousands of Muslims. One such example is that of the largest state of the USA, Alaska. In this video, we will be getting you up to speed with everything you need to know about the Muslim community in Alaska, so let's begin. The first people probably came to what is now Alaska about 13,000 years ago. They either walked from what is now Russia, which was connected to Alaska by a patch of land up to 600 miles wide called the Bering Land Bridge, or they sailed. Russians settled in Alaska in 1784, and in 1867 the United States purchased the land for two cents an acre. Wait, this is a history lesson. Many thought the harsh habitat was a bad buy until gold was struck in 1872. Alaska became the 49th U.S. state in 1959. Alright, so in the early 2000s, there were only a few hundred Muslims living in Alaska. However, with the influx of refugees from the Middle East, Africa, the Balkans and Southeast Asia, the population of Muslims in Alaska grew to around 3,000. These refugees chose to migrate to Alaska mainly because of the state's high economic growth due to oil revenues, conservative values, as well as because it is known to welcome refugees from conflict areas. Alaska deserves its reputation for being cold. Much of the state is covered in a layer of permafrost, permanently frozen soil, and it's home to the largest glacier in North America. Moving on, since there was not a single mosque in Alaska at that time, the Muslim community chose a strip mall in the middle of Anchorage, the largest city of the state, where they would hold congregational prayers. Soon they realized that the space offered by the mall was too small to accommodate thousands of Muslims. This brings back mem memories from when I was in France, right? Because, uh, n yeah, there's a lot of those kind of things. No, in France, there's a lot of houses that is being used as as a, a, a mosque or a masjid. Um, if you do not know that this is a mosque, you wouldn't know because it just looks as a house. But when I go to Czech Republic and Poland, I think Czech Republic especially, there's many like, I don't know, shop lots, etc. of a mall that actually become a mosque. That's when the idea of building the first mosque of Alaska started to float. So in 2008, the leaders of the Muslim community of Alaska commenced work to turn this dream into a reality. Unfortunately, at that time, Alaska's Muslim community was composed largely of refugees who had little money. So every few months, the leaders of the community had to fly to other states of the USA looking for donations. Finally, in 2010, the work on the mosque began. After four years of construction in 2014, the first mosque of Alaska, the Islamic Community Center of Anchorage, Alaska, IWCAA, came to life. A few years later, an Islamic school named Fahid al aida was also inaugurated. To date, the IWCAA and the Fahid al aida school continue to serve the Muslim community of Alaska, which according to the last census has grown to nearly 5,000. The majority of these Muslims reside in Anchorage, where both the IWCAA and Fahid al aida school are located. Although the Muslim community of Alaska is comprised of people from diverse backgrounds and cultures, there is hardly any friction between the opposing groups. It's because they understand that Islam comes before any culture or ethnicity. One uh, I was wondering why that point was, is, is being pointed out. Because first, why should it... Meaning, meaning Islam is Islam, right? But when the elaboration there, th there's two emotions inside me. One is, uh, Alhamdulillah, that's good here. But second, there's still some question in my in, in, in me. It says, 
really though not no no friction at all because as a muslim that knows muslim that comes from different backgrounds uh, you know uh, we we are not fighting but uh, some friction tend to happen one of the best examples that shows the solidarity of alaskan muslims is the time of ramadan now traditionally muslims start their fast at dawn and break at sunset when the maghrib adhan is called however when a country is situated above the Arctic Circle like Alaska is, there really is no sunset during summers or sunrises during winters. So what's their routine, you may ask? Well, Siddhiku Muhammad, a Muslim resident in Alaska, describes their Ramadan routine saying, the sun rises at about 4 o'clock in the morning and sets around midnight. As such, we fast from 4 a.m. to 12 a.m. That's around 20 hours of fast, Though it sounds harsh, Siddhika's mother, Hajiya Serena, finds fasting in Alaska easier than fasting in West Africa, their home country. She says, the weather here is cool so I can fast without even eating anything. I don't feel hungry at all, but in Ghana, due to the heat, you'd be eager to break the fast. Since I have been fasting here, I have never worried about how long it is. Yeah, um, I think, I think when you have such a long day like that and such a, sh such a short night like from 12 to 4 um, for many muslim the, the issue is not the l the length of the fasting is <laughs> is the short period of time of the night uh, because when i went to poland i think during ramadan uh, it is quite interesting because uh, is, is it during ramadan that i went there but i was wondering I don't remember exactly whether it's during Ramadan or I was wondering what will happen to me if I was living there in Ramadan because um, the the night is quite short or the the yeah from like what what I can recall because the the subuh prayer is very early and night uh, at least the insha is very late so it's like almost no point of sleeping because if you want to sleep it's very hard to wake up back again <laughs> for a sh meaning just after one two hours of sleep right uh and yeah so that's that's i think for me that would be more of a question than the length uh, yeah though hajia serena's patience is commendable some muslims in alaska prefer breaking their fasts based on makkah's time Athor Jodhri, a prominent Muslim at the Islamic Center, says, In summers, days could be as long as 21 hours, and in December, the days could be only as long as 3 hours. So we have been told by scholars from the Islamic Center of Northern Norway to follow a standard time zone, and what we do is we stick to the time frame of Makkah, which is the holiest place in Islam. We fast from 4 a.m. until around 7 p.m. Athar Jodhri's wife, Zakia, finds Ramadan in Alaska to be similar to their routine in Bangladesh. By the way, that is the... because some, some might ask, how can there be such difference? Uh, that's, you know, the fake discussion, the jurisprudence uh, you know, discussion within Islam where you, you can see vast <sighs> ikhtilaf, you know, vast differences of opinion, right? Within, you know, it's just fake opinion. The belief is the same, uh, the core principle is the same, it's just a certain act uh, of worship, uh, technical aspect may be different. Even when I was in, in Europe, right, so there are different, that's quite interesting for me there, right, different opinion on the timing, etc. So uh, some of the calendar of when you start and when you finish your fasting, for example, it, it's, it's such a bizarre experience when I was first there because it's quite different. She says, We eat suhoor, we have iftar, and sometimes we also spend time with the community. The only thing we miss here from back home is there were a lot of Muslims around the neighborhood. Islam in Alaska is defined by heartwarming gestures of the Muslim community celebrating their religion in peace, their diligence in praying the Farz Salah, even during the harsh winters and doing their rightful duties as a Muslim without any complaints.
Hasib Ali, a Sudani Muslim who moved to Alaska, says, We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our intentions of fasting on Alaska's time and help us honor Islam the right way. May Allah shower the Muslim community of Alaska with prosperity and continue to add more brothers and sisters to its fold. Inshallah. Now, the, the, the video is sort of focusing on, on fasting a lot. Which is quite interesting. O of course, I, I do understand because because of the length of the time of the day, then normally fasting is becoming a big question. How? how or, or even actually the fact that they do not really have sunset and sunrise, right? So, because that's the defining, uh, normal defining moment when you start and finish um, your fast. But actually when you have that, also the, the timing of the, the, the prayer, right? The, the five daily prayer is... I think it's interesting because that's also one of the culture shock that I have when I first arrived in Europe where uh, in different season you have such a different length of uh, night time and day time and that affect your prayer time right so if when the day becomes short uh, I, I really have to be mindful of what time is it because otherwise if I just work as usual suddenly you, you you risk actually your your prayer time is already up right it's finished already and going to the next prayer time you didn't even realize it because it's so short uh, because in malaysia it's throughout the year throughout the 20 years 40 years i've been living here uh you know it's basically the shift is just minutes right so we, we kind of know when the, the the prayer time right but there you have to look at the calendar every single day yeah, uh, me at least. Right. So that's quite interesting. So I think that's also that would be quite interesting there. But uh, anyway, Alhamdulillah, it's it's good to to hear. Even though the image here is just I think stock images, uh, without the real image of Muslim community there, uh, it would be a dream come true if I would ever have the opportunity to visit and see Muslim communities there, as I have the opportunity to see in 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 Europe, basically in Moscow, in uh, France, German, Czech Republic, uh, Poland. I have seen Muslim communities there, uh, Turkey as well. Um, so hopefully in this part of the US, one day, inshallah, one day. Uh, anyone living there, I'm not sure, coincidentally living there, want to invite me over? Let's make it happen. Uh, with that, thank you for watching. See you next time.